Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today's video is going to be my Game Week 10 Draft Wildcard. I'm FPL Fran, so thank you guys so much for watching. Obviously, this is one of the most popular weeks to watch and to, to play a wildcard, right? Game Week 10 was one of the weeks where we penciled in a long time ago. In fact, it was actually the week where I wanted to wildcard initially, but as it turns out, I did go for a Game Week 8 wildcard. But that's sort of how things have turned out. Game Week 10 is nice because you can actually move very easily into picks like the Aston Villa picks if you haven't already moved into let's say Watkins who's been just killing it so far at the same time it's a nice window to genuinely consider more Arsenal picks more Liverpool picks back into the team and maybe of course change your keepers around restructure the team look at some of the budget options that have actually cropped up as of late and I think actually I've got some crazy options that I would suggest that I think a lot of people would, would be upset with, but we'll see what happens. I think there's fantastic picks and a lot of diversity in FPL right now. So I think right now, sort of following on from last week's Game Week 9 wildcard template, I do think it hasn't really changed too much, right, in terms of the structure that I would like to play going forwards. The Game Week 9 wildcard actually did fantastic, but let's see if we can do better in Game Week 10 here. So the keepers are going to be Ariel and Turner. I think this is relatively uncontroversial. The reason why I would rather go for Ariel and Turner is because, okay, you can actually go for 3.9 keepers, save a little bit more money. But sometimes, obviously, if, if let's say Nottingham Forest ever have a decent game, I guess you can just play Turner. However, you could probably look towards, let's say, Turner being pretty uh, horrific and, and suggest, obviously, that Ariel is the player that you want to go with for the, for the long term. I think West Ham actually have good fixtures, right? Particularly from a defensive point of view. So you can actually generally say, this is the time to actually go for Ariola and then a 3.9 keeper, really up to you based on budget. Then in the defensive positions, what I would suggest going with is actually Simikas, Gabriel, and Dalo. Now, the reason why I'm suggesting these picks is because right now you've got the opportunity to go with what I consider to be four defenders and actually one premium defender, right? The premium defender here is going to be Trippier, but I would also recommend that if you actually have insane money in the bank, then you can actually go for Trent Alexander-Arnold as well. I think this budget draft actually accommodates, for example, for going for Trent, but if you can't afford Trent, then simply just go for Trippier. So I'm suggesting a little bit of a cheaper draft because I know that my team value is a little bit higher than most. So I think you can obviously think about reducing budget and and this is the pick i would do so right trippier and trent alexander arnold are quite different in the sense that trippier doesn't have perfect fixtures but you can definitely see him as someone you can play week to week like like an attacker and with someone like trent ultimately he's got perfect fixtures so this is the time where it makes sense to actually spend that sort of budget around trent even though he is sort of ludicrously priced right in comparison to trippier so as far as Simakas and Gabriel and Dalo, these are players who just have good fixtures going forwards and are, are very cheap prices. You might say, of course, why are, are we missing out on cash? And I do think cash has actually risen to su such an extortion amount that it's very hard to actually afford cash into your teams. I still think that cash is a very reasonable pick, but is he essential in this wildcard draft now that he's actually so much in terms of price? I wouldn't say so because I do think you could actually go for someone like Pau Torres, but what is really the appeal of going into Aston Villa if you're not going for an attacker like cash? And Ultimately, when you see, for example, Cash, he's basically a sort of a right wing, right back hybrid. And it's a very, very sort of different contrast to, let's say, Pal Torres. Yes, of course, Pal Torres scored a goal, but we always talk about it with center backs. Unless there's some specific sort of replicable way that they can actually score goals consistently. Uh, like, let's say, for example, if we can see consistently that their XG per 90 is extremely high, then maybe we can say, of course, center backs make sense. But for now, it doesn't really make that much sense. I think going for Pal Torres, it's not like Aston Villa are an amazing defense, right? cash is there for the attacking upside and with Dallo, you have that sort of attacking upside a little bit obviously his underlying stats haven't been incredible this season but it's it's just a case of fixtures where i would actually prefer Dallo's fixtures over cash given the price and also access to bonus points as well which is something that Dallo is just incredible with as far as let's say gabriel he's just a budget option i think zinchenko his minutes are, are a bit too dicey so you've been white a little bit too expensive out of reach so i would just simply go with gabriel they have great fixtures and you can always just bench an arsenal player right when they have the Newcastle game, you'll have other players filling in, like a Dallow, like a Trippier, like a Simicast as well. So those are the players that I would actually go with. And as far as, let's say, the midfield, I would actually go with Salah, Saka, Diaby, Adingra, and Palmer. And a lot of people are going to be throwing up their arms now. You know, there's two players that are probably quite controversial. I actually mentioned Palmer in last week's draft, and, you know, I'm not surprised that he actually, once again, was the penalty taken in the Arsenal game. Obviously, I was quite surprised that Chelsea actually played incredibly well which is not something that we usually expect. And what I said about Palmer is that this draft, whatever you're cooking up with this current wild card, has to last you until gaming 20 at the bare minimum. So Palmer actually is just a ludicrously priced pick where you just keep him because he's a penalty taker. And worst case, he's on the bench for most weeks. But actually, to squeeze in that value there is where I'd prefer it, right? For example, you can actually go Raya plus Areola as your goalkeeping pair, but why not save that additional money to actually improve your outfield players and actually make sure that you have a very well-balanced bench. And when it turns out, 
that Chelsea have good fixtures again, which is going to be game week 16 onwards, or even game week 14, where you can actually plug him in for one week. Palmer is incredible. Another player that I'd like to suggest, also really highly dependent on injury uh, situations, is actually a Dingra from Brighton, because this is the perfect time to really target either Brighton or West Ham's fixtures. And in my opinion, I'd actually probably still target uh, Brighton's fixtures, given that a Dingra is so cheap. I do think Bowen is a little bit expensive and a little bit out of reach, so I don't really prefer Bowen on my draft. You can obviously go for Bowen, uh, but this is going to be a 3-4-3 attacking draft, and I actually much prefer some of the attackers over Bowen, which is why, obviously, you can see that I've prefaced, let's say, going for a 3-4-3 in this situation here by going for two budget players, and that's going to be Palmer and Adingra. Adingra can pretty much play the next few fixtures. We can obviously watch the European fixtures that Brighton will be involved in the Europa League to see whether there's actually additional depth, but so far we've seen actually Adingra get really consistent minutes, and we know that March is now injured, so that just really sort of locks in his minutes in the Premier League for me and makes him a very, very inter interesting pick. And the big thing about him and Matoma are they both don't have penalties. So if you think Matoma is a fantastic option, I don't really see any reason why, for example, someone like Adingra with much better minutes couldn't be a great option. It kind of reminds me of the arguments last season where we had March and Matoma, and March and Matoma both did incredibly well at various times, right? There's nothing to say Adingra won't do well now that they have super easy fixtures. So then this team is actually rounded out in the midfield by Salah and Saka. I think these are premium options that I would definitely consider. As I said last week, it's a case of a transitional week, whether you want to actually keep your Spurs assets or actually move towards game week 10 here on this wildcard draft, where I would generally consider dropping all my Spurs players. I, I am happy, for example, even on my own team to maybe consider moving out both of both of my Spurs players. But I probably think, for example, someone in that Madison position as someone who wildcard in game week 8 is probably so something that can be replaced by Saka. And if you, let's say are trying to, let's say, funnel more money into, let's say, the midfielders or the defense, right? I think that, for example, Trippier is, is someone that I probably would consider a little bit more valuable at this moment in time than Sun. And I think he just has a bit more permanence there. We'll see, obviously, with Sun's minutes, you know, in the next fixture versus Fulham, see how many minutes he gets. But I do think there's also a concern that Sun has been dealing with a lot of injuries, which also impacts, in general, his output. Whereas for Trippier, we don't really have that sort of concern. Also why I, for example, mentioned that the European fixtures don't really concern Trippier too much, right? Ultimately, he's such an essential player. Um, very hard to sort of see this Newcastle team operate at their best without him. So that's why I'm actually going with this midfield duo here. And then actually in the forward positions, once again, going with a 3-4-3, the exact same front line that I suggested last week on a Game Week 9 draft wildcard, it is going to be Haaland, Watkins, and Alvarez. And a lot of people will be asking the question, you know, why are we actually continuing to persist with Haaland? And ultimately, I still think that they have good fixtures and also a very, very high likelihood that they have a double game week on game week 20, right? Or so when you actually look at that, yes, they have a blank, but you could probably actually free hit the blank on 18. Or even if you don't free hit the blank on 18, you can still bench those Man City players. And ultimately, Haaland just has incredible value. And the way I see it is now that we have so many budget options within the midfield, such as Adingra, such as Palmer, some of the picks that I haven't even mentioned as well that are fantastic, like a Gordon that I actually own in my own draft, or even, for example, you know, when we talk about it, in a few weeks' time, we probably will all want Mbuma back into our teams. These are all great budget picks that are fantastic and operating at such cheap prices. Why not just, for example, tap into the opportunity to capture all the best captaincies in the future, right? Because when I think about it, next week is going to be a solid captaincy. Game Week 10 is certainly a solid captaincy. But Game Week 11 is Bournemouth for this great City team that really haven't been interesting at all in terms of attack, but you're facing truly, truly one of the worst defenses. I mean, worse than Brighton, for example. So, I still like the chances of Holland being a captaincy in that fixture. And I'd rather sort of in, ensure myself in that situation where, as you can see, the swings to the wild cards and the captaincies can be so brutal. I, I personally myself did a Holland captaincy, and obviously that's eight points down versus Salah captainers, and that's just how it is. But I still think putting yourself in the best position in terms of captaincies makes sense, and we have enough budget picks in this game right now that are actually amazing in terms of their value, where we actually generally, generally don't have to feel that we're going to be losing out in terms of value over the sort of use of our budget for now so that's going to be the suggested draft and obviously for this week when we're actually fielding the draft what i would obviously do is simply just go with a very simple structure here on game week 10 the bench is going to actually be consisting of players like alvarez taylor and dallo these are bad fixtures right the man city the, the manchester derby is what makes alvarez and dallo sit on the bench and actually you can very comfortably play palmer this week as a penalty taker versus brentford you have a dinger here who's a great fixture versus fulham Diaby versus Luton, Saka here, who's going to be playing versus Sheffield United at home, perfect fixture. 
Ariola, Alexander Arnold, or for example, Trippier, as I mentioned, Gabriel and Simikas. Salah, the obvious captain this week. I think obviously you can go for Watkins. I'd probably with vice captain Watkins over Haaland, but it's very close between the two. And ultimately, yeah, Haaland and Watkins as your front line this week in a 3 5 2. But in the future, this will be a 3 4 3 because City don't really have any worse fixtures than this Man United game because they've already played the Arsenal away fixture. And after that, the next tough game is Liverpool, which is still going to be a home fixture then. So quite a different scenario. And that's why I actually quite like the structure here. Yes, Haaland's going to have a bad fixture in game week 13, but it's the same case with Salah as well. That's a bad Salah fixture. But you get to capture all the best captaincies, in my opinion, until game week 20. And I would much rather go with Salah Haaland right now, just because the budget is available with the sort of cheap players being very, very good. Now, if you don't want to go with Haaland, I think obviously that's something you can mention. Drop it in the comments if you actually are considering, let's say, looking at Haaland list drafts. And if you are, then I'm happy to suggest some Haaland list drafts and actually maybe do an exclusive sort of bonus video on that as well. Because I understand a lot of people are are, are tired of Haaland, but I, I, I myself, as someone who even owns Haaland, I'm not really considering moving off of him. Just let me know what you guys' thoughts are, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching.